Welcome to the Holy Spirit's Curriculum of Joy podcast. My name is Juanica Oberhuber, and I'm your host. My guest today is Francis Zhu. Hi, I hope I pronounced your name right. Yes, yes. Hi, Juanica. Nice to meet you, and thank you for joining us, everybody. Yeah, it's such a pleasure to be able to have so many wonderful guests here and have so many wonderful listeners and participants. It's really a pleasure. So I will start with a, a question that I like to ask my guests when they come on for the first time, because it, it opens up the space for a very deep discovery of who we are. So that's why I asked that question. So how did you come to see the world the way you do today, Francis? <laughs> that is such an open question. Yeah, it's, thank you. Well, I, you know, looking back, I just feel I, I marvel at this journey of transformation. And I truly, really have to give all the credit to the Holy Spirit because um, I grew up as, a, as an atheist and I actually really never um, really believed that there is anything supernatural or anything that the five senses cannot see or touch or perceive that exists. And also growing up, I've um, just set my goal pretty clear. Um, you know, I was told there is definitely a formula to, to happiness and live a fulfilling life here. So I have really set myself up to say, okay, then whatever it takes, that's, that's my focus in my life. I want to achieve success, get approval, um, have good image, good self-concept and good relationship, good financial security all of that. So it's like, okay, if that is the formula for happiness and for a fulfilling life, then that's, that's where I set myself on the path on and very, really dedicated to that. And I think it was around, um, when I was quite, um, how do I put it? Like, I felt like at a certain point I moved from China to Australia and I felt like I actually have pretty much achieved or well underway to all the goals I have set. And, and yet I felt so, so, so unhappy and empty and something just couldn't really click in my heart. So I remember one day I was driving and this question just spontaneously happened in my mind. I just thought, you know, I asked this question to myself as why is that I'm still not happy? What am I still missing? I have everything that I um, try to achieve. Why am I still not happy? And I remember that being the first time that I didn't have an answer. So I forgot about it, just left the question, I arrived at my destination, I, I forgot about it. And I can see now looking back, that was the opening to a huge transformation, just that question, because ever since that point, um, I, every time I asked a question, very specific question, I was told. And the first time was quite startling because right after that, I was, you know, walking in a park one day at lunch break from work. Um, I just feel like, you know, I, I've achieved so much. I've got my MBA and I'm working in this amazing company in Australia. Is this really it? You know, I also did my program in Australia and also in, in America. So like, is this really it? Should I stay? Should I maybe move back to China? What, what, where is the fulfillment here? And then I just heard this voice just so out of my everyday experience, his voice told me, stay, stay and wait. There will be something big waiting for you here in Australia. And that voice felt so clear to me. I said, yes, I will stay. And 
just this is like a very out of pattern experience, but I felt this this clarity and comfort and the clarity of this guidance. So I I just stayed and not really questioning it, not really questioning what is that voice that I'm hearing. I just like it was so assuring somehow. I trusted completely and I stayed and start to keep my eyes really wide open to what is that I'm here waiting for. I felt like suddenly my, my senses become super acute, like, okay, what is this thing that I'm here waiting for? I was very present for anything that's happening in my life. And then before, before long, of course, a miracle came to my life and it was so profound. So I, I thought, oh, this must be the thing I'm waiting for. And, and I've, when I started with the course, it was just so many synchronicities. First thing is that I felt good to study the course so much that I felt I'm compromising working in that company because I, I hide a digital PDF version of the course behind my computer, my spreadsheets. And I would like going back and forth <clears throat> doing the lesson and then doing my work, but it feels just feels like not very, um, not very fulfilling, but, but then I had this crazy idea to quit my job, to study the course, um, full time or give myself more time to do that. <clears throat> At the time it felt like crazy. And I, I, I tried to talk myself out of it. So I said to myself, no, I, you know, even though I might have the funds to sustain myself for a while, I love my boss so much, so much. This is an amazing relationship. He took me in under his wings. I, I, I'm not going to let him down. So I made up my mind. I'm not going to do that. The next morning, my boss called me to his office and just said, I want to talk. And, and, and I read a, a group of other people who are all his team members. He said, I want to tell you guys something. I quit. And I was like, what? I was, I, it was so unbelievably startling to me because I would just convince myself not to do it because of him. The next morning he said he quit. And I couldn't believe it. I kept asking him, who are you talking about? Who is quitting? To the point he was like, me, who else? What's wrong with you this morning? You know, like it was just like, and then, so I, I felt like it was some kind of, strong, strong symbol for me to, to do it. It's like, okay, I have this desire, this idea to go toward the course. And every time this desire comes up, there's a huge synchronicity. And it's almost like the whole world yields to this desire. So my boss quit and then I submit my resignation and I, first also went to the library and, and see whether there is an actual physical book because I hadn't bought the book. I was just studying it on my computer at work. So I thought, okay, I, I, I will go to the local library and see whether I can get a book first. And there, there is one copy of the book. I took it home and the next day I have a friend come over to, to have dinner and he saw all the books and he saw the course and he took it out. He said, you know, we have a Course in Miracle group here in Sydney, Australia. I said, oh, I don't know. He said, oh, you should go to that group. And here is the phone number. So, but he said, but actually the, the group is tonight. So you missed this week, but you can go next week. So I thought, Oh, okay. That sounds good. But, you know, I'll call the guy and I'll just see how I feel. So I called the facilitator and the next day, and I said, you know, I know you have the group yesterday. Um, so yeah, maybe I can come next week. And he said, no, no, yesterday we actually had a birthday party. So we didn't have it. We're having it today now in 15 minutes and come now. And I said, uh, I, I don't know where you even are, you, you know, and he, he gave me the address It's literally two house next to my house. I couldn't believe it. It was like, 
almost something is pushing me. Do it. Do it now. Don't wait. Not even a week. Just do it. And all this synchronicity. Then <laughs> after I joined that group, it was very, very heart opening. And I felt like, oh my God, this is something is like, you know, this bubbly joy rising up in my heart like never before. And I really, really want to talk about the course or devote myself to it all the time, not just once a week. So I had this feeling to start my own group just for the sake to be able to talk about it a little more whenever I want to. And so when I did it, then the second meeting, someone came to my group and said, you should, um, you should go to a retreat with David Hofmeister. He is an American teacher. He comes to Australia all the time. And we just finished the retreat. And our feet is all hopping above the ground. That's how happy we feel after the retreat. And it was like, so at the first, I was a bit resistant to it. I thought, well, I just started this group, you know. I'm, I'm. But then um, when David actually came back to Australia the next time, someone is hosting him. And this person is a, um, a group member in my own group and said, would really appreciate if you can put a big um, promotion out to all your group people because we have I have 150 people in my course group. And I said, I, I just, I don't even know this teacher. I really need to, you know, first check him out before I put a big promotion. So that's how I actually got pushed to go to one of David's two hour gathering. And I went <clears throat> and he's, Joy was so contagious for me. And I was kind of shaken and shocked in a good way because I was feeling this deep passion with A Course in Miracles. But I never really, at that, at that point, I never really knew that A Course in Miracles is going to bring joy. And that is the goal, consistent joy, you know. So that was like almost like a huge opening for me. And so I, you know, I went to his retreat and I packed up my life and I went to, um, to the Living Miracles Monastery because I felt like I have so much mind training to do in my, you know, in myself. There's so many layers. There is a lot of, um, there is a lot of practice that's required for my mind to consistently reach that kind of consistency and clarity. So when I was packing up my life, I suddenly remember this big voice that told me to stay. And I just remember to check with the voice again. I said, is this really what I'm supposed to do? I'm going to leave. And the voice said, yes, this is what you have been waiting for. Go now. And so this is actually all pre, um, you know, I reached this point before I came to the community of Living Miracles and truly give my whole life 24 hours to this practice. But it was so obviously guided by the spirit without any... <laughs> It was like mind-blowingly obvious and not even me personally have to think that I know the spirit is guiding me. If anything, I didn't, you know. And so I, so it became, if anything, it became a theme for this journey for me, you know, all the way from the very beginning till I, I packed up my life in Australia and moved to the U.S. till today is still the same theme that that we have a heavenly guide. This journey is not supposed to be figured out by ourselves. It's going to be us holding hands with Jesus and holding hands with the Holy Spirit and really give our trust to say yes and to be guided one small step at a time 
And this is how, you know, I would have never be able to shape or frame. This is going to be how the, uh, the awakening journey look like, or this is going to be how my journey look like. It would be very scary if I knew from the beginning, because it looks so tremend tremendously different. But every single time that I, I say yes to what seems so profoundly obvious to me, I realized that's, that's what I truly want. And I realized that to wake up to God is actually to wake up to what we truly want. And that is very different um, perspective I have. Like I, I always thought we have to struggle here and you have to, you know, you have to sacrifice. But truly I realized, no, this, when this, when you get on this journey, you're going to realize that God wants you to have everything, absolutely everything, all the joy that, that ever there ever is, all the joy you can contain, all the joy you allow to come in and all the connection and the love and the satisfaction is what God's wills for us. And, and I, I didn't really believe that just by reading the book, but what really shaped or changed my perception and get me convinced more and more and more and more is actually to, to realize, oh my God, I have a heavenly guide that is just carrying me on a daily basis and loves me and gives me this every step that I, I would never know that would bring me happiness, but it does over and over and over and over again. So I would say today, I, I still don't feel that I, I know um, how this journey is going to be and how, how, whether there, there is no formula, you know, but the, the things that really is clear without a shadow of a doubt is that we have a guide and this guide knows all. And this guide is, is right here if we ask him and not just, <clears throat> not just the actual big decisions, even small things like how do I forgive someone? How do I forgive someone? I don't really attempt to know how I forgive someone. And I just ask, you know, Jesus or Holy Spirit, you know, what, 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 what do you have me think right here? And this, this amazing thing just come. I remember actually after the first retreat I had with David Hofmeister in Australia, I, I had, because I had a, a group of Course in Miracle friends in my course group in Sydney, not everybody joined the retreat. Actually, only a handful of people came with me to the retreat. And my, my good friend at, at the time didn't come. And I felt, oh, I would really want to go back and tell her everything I learned from the retreat, especially how to not hold a mask, how to be authentic and integrous in my expression and communication. How do I teach her that? This is my question at the end of the retreat. And I just asked, I said, Jesus, how do I teach her how to know how not to hold a mask? Because I felt like that's my biggest learning in this retreat. And as I closed my eyes, I suddenly this picture came to mind. I was sit standing with my friend in my house. And all of a sudden, my friend turned to Jesus. She became Jesus in white robe. And I never saw Jesus before, ever, um, either in vision or maybe just in some movies. But it was kind of shocking to me because Jesus showed up in the white robe the, the way he is. And it was so overwhelming for me that she turned to Jesus. And I remember that reaction I had was in my vision. I could not even stand up. I, I immediately kneeled down, <laughs> touched his feet and said to him that I would learn how to let my own mask down, not to teach 
her or you, you know, it's not the question. It's not the, it's not the issue. She has no issue, but I have to learn continuously how to let my mask down. But that was so profound that, that vision, because I realized that that kind of set a tone of, you know, from my first retreat, like how to go about this journey and sharing and even teaching. Like it's, it's never about someone else needs to learn from you. That's the very, very first question I asked Jesus about how to teach someone. And, and this person I was supposed to teach turned to Jesus himself. But also another thing that was so profound was that Jesus, um, looked how he looked and I, I had no idea. I, I knew how, who he is. You know, I, my only connection with him at the time was the course, but not, not really a personal close connection because I didn't read the Bible. I didn't really know a lot of the parables, but the fact that he showed up in my mind with such clarity indicates something. I, I know him. I know him so closely, intimately. I know how he looks. I know how he wears, how he dresses. I know everything. It was like a mind blowing to me. So, so anyway, so that's just, maybe I should uh, stop soon and see whether there are any questions to maybe go a little further, but, but I think that's, I hope that is a kind of a account of how, how, how I develop this uh, way I see the world is truly through completely being carried and being guided and to know that without a shadow of a doubt, it brings me so much peace and relaxation and joy. Yeah, that's beautiful to hear this development of trust as it's called in A Course in Miracles. And in fact, you were able to trust that voice when it came up. <clears throat> And I think that's something that we don't all do, right? <laughs> we don't always say yes to the voice that comes up <laughs> to tell us the truth. So I think that's a beautiful thing to to discover. Right? And, I, and it would be interesting to have experiences with people who heard the voice but didn't follow the instructions. And then and, and you were, were maybe you were guided how you could help them to to follow the instructions of the voice instead of not doing that. Yeah, I, I, I do hope that this can bring some um, inspiration for people to say, oh, maybe, maybe I do hear the voice and maybe, maybe I can trust because, you know, the, the fact is the voice comes to the proportion of our willingness to listen. So at the beginning, it, it's, you know, in my case, I would say it, it was very loud and obvious, but it's not always the case. It was the first time I heard it. It was like that. And maybe there are a few times, but as I go, as I went on the journey, actually, I, I don't hear the audible voice like that kind of obvious way anymore. So it's, it's, it's very subtle and it's, it's a still quiet, still voice in the mind, sometimes it's just a thought. But I think for me, I realize the voice brings joy. So the voice doesn't really bring a feeling of sacrifice and like you're, the voice is gonna twist your arm to do something. I do remember at, at the very, very beginning, it told me to do something, I kind of shouted out big no. But then it took me a few years to actually do it. I still um, did it in the end. But in the end, I, I feel like it's all a development of trust for me to really feel this different quality um, this voice shows up with. Because we want to know, what what is this voice? Is this truly the guidance or is this the, the ego? But I noticed there is a very distinct quality of the two voice, not in terms of what it says, because the ego can sound very convincing and logical, 
it can talk, whatever you know. But it's in the quality. The the still small voice is very patient and very quiet. It actually waits until either our mind is not very busy, or when I actively just give it a little bit of time to to tune in, then something would come in. Um, do this because I remember there was one time I was, yeah, just kind of I have a funk with something and feeling like I'm a victim and not happy about what happened and just like on and on in my mind. This this is nonstop in my mind. And then I was also at the same time listening to a YouTube. While my mind was going on with this story of what happened to me, and this video is about a psycho psycho therapist talking, and he was just saying, you know, normally when the patient even come to the door, he already achieved fifty percent of healing, and for some reason that caught my attention. So I thought, oh, maybe just the fact if I I I can stop myself in this. Storytelling in my own mind, just asking the spirit, is a symbol of me as a patient to come to the door. Maybe that's fifty percent of the work is already done by me. So when I heard that, I actually just stopped and just said, "Okay, then, spirit, here I am." And then I heard spirit saying, "Get up," because I was in bed, like getting just lying there and. Being grumpy, and then the spirits that get up and and、um, dry your dishes. It was such a tiny little prompt, almost as if it is not very、um, important in and of itself. But some for some reason that me getting up, getting it's like a, almost a symbol of getting away from what I have been so busy telling myself, and just immediately tune in. This other voice, happiness came to me straight away. It was like immediately. So this is really what the guidance is for and is about. It's really about, you know, getting us to get in touch with this happiness that's always here, already here. We tune out of it, you know, by telling us something else completely. So that's really,、um, yeah. Yeah, that's that's what the guidance is, and I I do want to encourage everybody and inspire everybody to to know that the spirit is just there waiting, and there is no consequence. You know, truly, there is no consequence of making it wrong. You know, how how wrong can we be <laughs> from this point? Really, let's just ask and. Drop a lot of the familiar thoughts and ask, and see what happens, and follow it. Yeah, I think that's very important, and it, it helps for sure. And I, I also was thinking of something else you said: dropping the masks, and that you learned and were taught through spirit to drop your own mask. Or masks. I don't know. Maybe it was many masks. Anyways, <laughs> at least in the experience.、Um, do you have anything you would like to share about how you did that, or what some examples of how you dropped that mask and started being from a different, coming from a different place in the way you interacted with people and yourself? Yes. Well, I I think、um, I felt when I first heard about、um, David, one thing that actually caught my attention was、um, someone from his community at the time told me that they practice no private thoughts and no people pleasing, and that was almost like a really inspired and scared me at the same time because I. That time, I had a lot of secrets.、Um, the secrets were kept because of the guilt. I felt so much guilt with how my relationship turned out. I felt all guilty about myself. 
uh, I couldn't make it work. And but it's like guilt everywhere. So the way I was handling it is not to tell people about what's really going on, so that nobody would judge me. And so it, it became a very controlled and censored way of living. Like I, you know, it's very you know just polite and and smile, but but then process everything you know, deep down on my own. So when I heard no private thoughts and no people pleasing, I just thought, oh my God, I, how far I am to that kind of freedom because I, I did feel the freedom of being able to be free, to not have secrets, to not guard all my brothers and sisters, not always being defensive and protective of myself and my self image, and also not be afraid to follow my heart. Even if I think it, other people don't like it, maybe I can find a way to share my heart instead of tiptoeing or just go the other way. So that's truly the, the, the starting point to even just to hear this is a way that you can live. And I think what truly helped a lot was to live in a community <laughs> that you're really living with people 24 seven and um, little annoyances and uh, triggers just at the beginning, it was absolutely nonstop. So I could either just pretend and nothing is happening but I couldn't even, I, I remember at the beginning, I was breaking down just by the smallest comments from other people. Um, quite innocently, they didn't maybe consider my feelings, but it, they, they meant no harm, but I would cause a whole breakdown that I wouldn't, I would cry all day long, couldn't really see anybody. So it was just some kind of thing that I feel is not really a work that I did, but the spirit is doing for me to say you you need to open up to people and first to be able to let yourself cry and be able to tell people you're upset and not hiding and put up a big smile all the time just tell people this is how i feel um just to be honest in that way and then the next step is actually to be able to just express it and then with the intention to say, you know, I don't like how I feel. I feel attacked or I feel uh, victimized, but I actually don't like. So is there is this possible that I'm wrong about this whole perspe perspective? Is this possibly that I can be wrong about this? So there started this, this kind of communication in the way I would talk to people and it become very, very honest. Um, not holding back. And, and I think it really helped to be with people who hold and share the same purpose because when, when you do that, especially at the beginning stage, everybody wants the same thing. Everybody wants to heal. We all want to be honest and want to be free. So that become a shared agreement that we, you know, we can express with each other, but not to attack, not to say you're wrong, I'm right. You did attack me. I have the right to be angry at you. But just to say, you know, can I be honest with you? This is how I feel. And But I want to be wrong about it. I want to hear what your perspective is. Maybe you see it totally differently, you know. And then it, it's, it actually is a different way of actually communicating with people. So that's how it, it all started. And then I feel like that, that is a very essential step for forgiveness to not hide and protect your own feelings and your own perceptions of what happened to you. And after I think I feel that is maybe the what you're asking of dropping the mask, just just be able to do it. But you do have to do it in a safe environment. And because the reason we hold a mask, because we don't feel safe, we don't feel loved. If I, we drop the mask, everybody's afraid to not be loved. That's the bottom line. And then in a healing environment, that's my suggestion too. If you want to really um, have this kind of 
connection with people, I would suggest create a safe environment where, with people who are on the same journey, who share the exact same goal and establish this shared agreement to start with and practice sharing in a way that there is no need to dance around. There's no need to, to feel wrong or guilty, but just to be very, very honest and present about what we feel. But then of course the goal is ask for help to be, to, to, for forgiveness of the perspective. And another thing I think you did to open this up for more people is that you created a movie with all kinds of people from the community sharing this, this perspective. So maybe you'd like to talk about that a little bit because then you got not only your perspective on it, but a whole lot of other perspectives of how to do this. Yes, um, I think that with the movie, it's it's very similar to the experience I had all along with this journey. Because I um, I left the monastery after three months, because that's that's how long I could stay in the United States without a visa. I left, and I thought I I learned it all. I learned a lot of things. I learned the expression session. Okay, I'm gonna maybe that's that's it. But then I had this dream. I went back to Australia and just waiting for the next step, whether I settle there or what. And then I had this dream of making a movie about the healing journey that I experienced in the monastery. So I felt this quality of the spirit guiding instead of a dream. So I, I came back for that. That was like the spirit was kicking me back. No, your time is not done yet. Go back. So I went back and that was 2011. I said, I come back to make a movie. And David's like, great, let's make a movie. But it didn't happen for six more years. And because I had a lot more work to be done to actually practice this, uh, this uh, mass, dropping the mass, be very, very honest, and also work with people in a project collaboratively, but not working for an end goal of results. Because when we do that, we actually can't help but start to compromise the other priority of healing. If we're just focusing on the end goal, of we have to get it done. Our emotional healing is not going to be able to be at the forefront. Nobody would say, let's just express for eight hours. Who cares about whether the movie is made? You know, let's get it all cleared first. But so this is like what all that I have to learn all these years to, to know that, you know, to how hard actually to, to change our, uh, our priorities when it comes down to specific things. You know, we can say that, yes, I put the spirit first, but when we actually have a project that I'm invested in, how much do you really put healing and forgiveness and spirit first? How much good idea, how many good ideas you have that you want to realize? It's like all come to a head and you, you, you can't have both ways. You, you, you're going to have one way or the other and it's going to be so obvious which one you have. So I think I had to learn how to work with a group of people and still hold the priority of listen and follow and emotional healing as a priority. And also, um, yeah, and also the spirit told me that he would send the team, he would send the people. I can't even choose the people. I can't choose the timing. He will he will make me realize when the timing is right. And also I didn't really know the content. I didn't really know what kind of movie it's going to be, what aspect we're going to be focusing on to feature the healing journey. I had no idea because there's so many things we can be focusing on. What, what are we talking about? You know, what are we making a movie about? But who? It was just a, a big open space. And so 
when the movie came about, it was very obvious. The people were sent, and the timing was sent. It was a mystery school where is a month month long retreat that we were holding in the monastery. Movie team was sent. When to set the camera? Even down to that detail, I I was told on the day set the camera here, because we were so you know we were all amateurs. We couldn't set the camera fast enough, and the microphones, and and all the lighting, and all the setup. We couldn't set anything fast enough. If there is a a big scene happening or expression happening, by the time we set it all up, it's already passed. It, it's because we're now making a scripted movie. You know, it's all. Documenting the real, real life healing, so spirit had to tell us ahead of time, set a camera here, and we do that, and something happens. So, so after we shot a whole month, then when I put, when I just started to go through all the footage, that's when I realized who actually is the main character chosen by the spirit, and and what are the themes. Of healing, the spirit want to feature. So it feels like、um, the spirit has his own way. And and like you said, the focus of the movie "Take Me Home" is definitely around people's expressions and letting letting the honest feeling up without having to fear of consequences. So that is. You know that is pretty obvious. You know, not only myself, but the whole team. A lot of the people are first time. They they never really done this work. They are not long term monastery residents. Like Soren, you know, he's a main character in the movie. He came to make the movie. He was the first time there. So you could actually witness the transformation. That everybody was going through by just allowing themselves to be. To be authentic and to be honest, there is a deep freedom there. So, I think this is a good spot to open the floor. Anyone who wants to ask a question or comment or share something, please raise your hand, and each of you will be able to say something if you want. Henry, you wanted to say something. Go ahead. They.、Um, while I was、uh, listening to Francis,、um, I've been enjoying this whole、um, podcast extremely. I want to say that first, and something was occurring in my mind that I. I I think has value, and、um, Jesus was the the one as a man that、uh, connected to spirit, and when when he went through his resurrection, and、um, Was was in the、uh, ascension, and he said, "I will send you the Holy Spirit." And so, why am I bringing that up?、Um, because some sometimes the way I experience spirit is I I hear the、uh, voice of Jesus between, and Jesus、uh, is a is like going to be really personal for each each person. Like he's he's going to talk to you the way you need to be talked to, or the, you know he talks to me the way I need to be talked to, and not the way Francis needs to be talked to, or Wanako needs to be talked to. He talks to Henry because <laughs> Henry is like you know something a little different, and um so like. When I started a course of miracles too, I, I felt really, really separate from everything, and well, basically, I felt like an ego. <laughs>、uh, 
like when I started lesson one, I uh, it was lesson one in a workbook. It it shocked me a lot, and um, then I started recognizing, oh, that's where I have to start, and like it's an identity crisis that we go through uh, in a course of miracles, and I I think like the way to go all the way to God is through Jesus, through Spirit, and Spirit brings us to God. It's like I don't want to separate things up that way, but. This idea is coming into my mind uh, as uh, Francis is talking. I wanted to share it. Um, Thank you, Henry. So go ahead, Eva. You just need to unmute your microphone. You have to tap it again. I allowed you to. Yeah. Hello. I'm Eva. <laughs> Hello, Francis. Hello. Um, I, I, I was your invitation, and I'm very happy to see you. Um, well, uh, I, two months ago, I was in Chapala in in the in La Casa de Milagros, just one month. Um, and Francis told, well, it was quite intense for for me that that the stage because uh, a lot a lot of um, shadow uh, go up. And I remember Francis told me, well, when you go back, you, you're, you'll integrate everything and you, you, you be better. And, and I have been this, these two months in a very profound healing. I have been making a, an audio libro with the course of miracle, with the test, and it has been a lot of, um go deep 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 in the teachings with Jesus and and now I feel like it has been integrating everything and it's like I'm seeing the light and and I see like the ego wants to to keep uh, sometimes um uh, not letting me to go up to truth, but it's uh, it's like a new beginning, and I feel very different. And so I'm I'm very very uh, very grateful, very grateful for that state. And well, just that's all. I I saw you, and I was very happy to see you again here. And thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Eva. So go ahead, Bhavna. Hi, Francis. Hi, everyone. Um, I have a question for Francis, and this is coming up, um, this topic of following guidance and praying and listening and following. Um, in the past, I've followed some prompts um, as an intuitive thing, and um, those things you know, worked out, but I didn't call it the Holy Spirit or Jesus or anything. Now I feel this, there's this big call for me to, to do this, like follow guidance and ask for guidance and listen to it. But I have, um, a huge resistance to doing that. And one, um, a couple of things one is I think that the the voice is going to tell me something 
um, that I don't want to do or that's going to take something away from me that I, I is valuable to me. And the second thing is I'm afraid that if it gives me something, like, for example, the, a movie experience, like movie making experience that Francis was talking about, if I was in that position, I would get very attached to something that the spirit gave that was very beautiful at the time. And I would want to hold on to it forever and not let it go. And that is a huge, um, I don't know, a huge block of mine and to not even wanting to ask for guidance because I cannot let go. Um, I have a very a, a attached sort of pattern. Um, and I just want to ask about this, like, how do you keep letting go as you get new guidance? <laughs> yeah, thank you, Bhavna. Interesting question. Well, I would say that what you, first of all, what you said about not wanting to ask because you're afraid of uh, what the guidance would tell you, I have the exact same fear um, because I was afraid my life would um, get this dismantled. Um, and I, I, I didn't know what it would look like. I didn't know whether it's going to be good. So I was like, there, it was uh, definitely not not something that um, you have alone. It's, it, it's a very universal fear with the spirit. And I remember um, I had asked my friend at the time, every single step, I feel like I'm like pulling teeth. It, it's, now I can say it as if it had all happened like, like that. But I can tell you every single time it was so much emotions. And it was needed because those emotions do need to be rinsed, do need to come up. And and yet, I remember as a friend at the time, it's like, how do you develop trust? How do you know? How do you just grow in this trust? Because I, I don't trust. I, I'm so scared um, the spirit is going to tell me something. Or when he actually did tell me something, that this is going to be terrible direction. And my friend at the time told me that the best way to develop trust is start trusting. There's no other way. And it was like, oh my goodness, like there's no shortcut, just something click in my mind I can trust. No, because because it's a personal relationship we, we're developing with the spirit. We can never really know God if we think God is against us. If, if we think God's interests and our interests are actually separate or different in any way. This is a profound um, thing that the spirit is here to actually heal, that our interests and God's interests are different. And I can guarantee you um, it's so rewarding to actually feel that fear but still do it too because those fear will be rinsed and, and we will realize that, oh, my God, what, I'm, what have I been thinking? You know, this is exactly what I want. But the second thing that you mentioned of, um, how do I let go? Um, I totally understand what you're saying, but I can guarantee you the spirit will never um, just give you one thing and then leave you there and then you have a void. What happens is going to be one guidance is going to lead to next and next. So once you say yes to one thing, there's another portal opens up there's the next one comes up. So as you walk, you will be attracted more and more to what is right in front of you. And I have the actual experience. The movie was, ex, um, experience was so beautiful and so profound. But then what comes next is more attractive and expensive. It's like truly, it's like what Jesus says in the course, everything become a toy. toy. You outgrow it. When the next guidance come in, you you put it aside without even looking back, because that's not the best thing in your life. It was back then, but your capacity to receive love grow since then. So more love gonna come your way, more inspiration gonna come your way, and this is how it's gonna go. 
So thank you for the question. It's beautiful. Yeah, I think that's a very beautiful thing to share that you just get one guidance and then the next from that. And we see, you know, I don't know where this podcast is going to. I, I don't know what is going to happen next. But at some point, I was asked to do it, right, by spirit. And so I, I started. And, you know, there's a lot of a lot of content in it now. So it's a, quite a journey. <laughs> That's it. So, so Henry would like to say something again. Go ahead. Mm, uh, in in response to that that question just that just happened, I recognize it in myself, like like it is all one mind, and so when, when somebody's speaking, I, I I see a reflection of my own mind. And that the fear of sacrifice. The, in A Course of Miracles, you can read a lot and a lot of stuff about that. It's, but it doesn't say it that way. It doesn't say fear of sacrifice. But that, like the idea that we have to sacrifice, there, there's a fear that we have to sacrifice. And like uh, Francis uh, said it beautifully about, well, it's it's like we 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 give up stuff, but it, it, it's not quite like we don't have the same will as God, a spirit. We 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 come into recognizing that actually, wow, you know, I, I actually just want to be happy, and this is the way. Like spirit tells me, okay, well, this is how to do it, you know. Nothing else. It's like, I've got my own program going as Henry. Well, surprise, right? No, not really. I mean, that's what ego is. It, it, it's the own program. So there's this authority problem going on. And, and I don't want to do God's will, right? I mean, that's where the sacrifice comes in. And it's, it's like, if, if there's a fear involved... Well, it's mine, or like if if you want to own it, it, it's yours. But so so that that would be like the the thing for me personally, where like like I fear guidance. It's kind of kind of a weird idea, right? Fearing guidance. <laughs> okay. Actually, the, you put it so perfectly, Henry, because the Course does say that we actually have a fear of love. And this is what it is, because guidance is from the voice, it's the voice of God guiding us towards love. And just as recognizing I have, you know, I'm afraid of losing things here, but truly there is... Um, a deeper kind of reason which we are not even consciously aware is this fear of merging with God's will and God's love. And I think that's so profound that, you know, you can acknowledge that. And I feel like that's why that's what we're all here to learn through actually following and be convinced that we want love. We love love. We love God. And that's not, that's not true that the ego is telling us, don't go there, you know, you're going to lose big time. But this is such a, just such a loving journey. Yeah. Chris, go ahead. Yes, I find our um, awareness of what we're talking about today is so helpful. And I wanted to also offer that it, I have a flat day today <laughs> with the Holy Spirit. I've noticed I've been in community for a year or so here at Namaste Village and um, how everything's been so sparkly and I've been so uh, out of pattern uh, prompts to do things. And, and today is a flat day <laughs> and here I am with you. And so I can see 
when I received the invitation to join, this is what spirit wants me to do is just to relax and to uh, listen. And that's what I wanted to offer. Yeah, thank you for that. It's, a, it's really beautiful to recognize that we can relax. We don't always do it, but we can. Uh, any other questions or comments or sharings? Okay, then, then I will pick up with some more questions. <laughs> so now this following guidance is so important that it led to you actually making a movie, even if it took you, you actually picked up the idea after six years and then actually did it and got all the guidance you needed. But it, what happened in between? Why did it? What was the journey before to get to those those six years of journey to get to actually doing the film? Yes, um, at the very beginning, I think it was more on my mind that is the, I thought that was the mission I came back to the monastery for. Um, so, but we started from so basic because at the time even you know david's youtube video the, the quality was just so bad we didn't even have a, a camcorder or a little camera we didn't have that so it started from like we have to purchase microphone and little camcorder for little practice and learning of how to shoot and how to set up microphones and it was at the very beginning i was just coming in with a function of let's do this but we realized the gap is very big so i we kind of like started to take little steps where i became focusing on just media quality let's just get the media quality app to know how to set up microphone how to do video in a, in a stable way and get um, even tripods. But really all these projects that I came back to do was set for me to learn how to truly collaborate and how to truly connect pe with people through forgiveness, not through just talking about logistics and do this, do this, but actually how to fully drop the mask and learn to forgive and learn to be authentic with each other. And also if we have disagreement or little misunderstandings, how do we truly go about forgiving it? That's really the learning. And the movie was very prominent in my mind at the very beginning because I kept asking like, when is this gonna happen? Oh my God, I can't see this is happening. So I was there for another, I think I, the second time I went for another, six months i went i got a visa to go for six months and at the end of the six months it was not close to be able to do a movie so i had to leave the country i went to canada and i was guided to to because there's someone who wants to start a little community there for me to to guide a group to do expression sessions and daily tasks so i was there facilitating that group and at the same time thinking about this thing and one day I was just walking and asked the spirit in my mind, I said, when is this going to happen? Is this really your guidance or is it actually just a dream or my fantasy? I was completely wrong. And as I was walking more, I heard it's already done. That's the, that's the sentence I heard. It's already done. And I can't tell you how much comfort it brought to me and for some reason, I trusted it immediately, even though, you know, it doesn't really make a lot of a logical sense, but I was studying the course for a while at the point. So I thought, oh, okay, it's already done. And then I heard, 
I will send you the people. You need to worry about nothing. 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 Drop it in my mind, in your mind, because you know I will set the time and I will send the people and it will be obvious. And actually, in reality, it's already happened. So basically, care about nothing. That's the the message, very clear. So I actually dropped it completely in my mind. I never really asked the question again. I never really think about it again. I just went on with.、Um, Continuing on with whatever is presenting to me, in next and next and and never the guidance never stopped, never never stopped. It was a, such a full life, you know. Go to Canada, do this house, then go to China, go travel to China with David, go back. It was like rolling for six years, and then so actually when the movie came back, it was shocking to me because I, I. I have forgotten about it for too long, and then、um, how it came in was, was a film director came to our community, and said he wanted to collaborate, and he gave a list of things that he really wanted to collaborate on, and the top thing is to make a movie with us. So David remembered me, so he called me in and said, you know, maybe this is the time your movie gonna be made. But he is offered to direct it, and I said that's great because I'm not a director. I just have a vision.、Um, I don't know, you know, maybe my my role could just be the vision and the the cheerholder and the consultant about the community, because the director doesn't know so much about the community. So I thought that's that's wonderful, and we started talking about. Then different people start to come in. Who have film experiences? It was very profound. But then, in the last minute, the director pulled out. He was he's not going to direct it anymore. And we, it was like the the clock is ticking, and all the team are going to arrive, and we actually need time to to start purchasing things in order for the, when the team arrive, we、we'll、actually have camera and have hard drive. And I was. I don't know who else can make those decisions. And then someone came to me said, "I, I heard that I'm the director's assistant. I'm gonna assist the director to make all these logistical dis,、um, purchases." So I said, "That's wonderful. You're the assistant. Who is the director?" And she said to me, "She said you." I said, "I am the director. I, I, I don't know anything about the movie. And it was so close. It was ten days before the team arrived." How is this gonna happen? But this is how it was. Just like okay, you're told through different ways through your brothers and sisters, and it was quite involuntary. You know, I cannot control it. I cannot. When it happens, you cannot get out of it. <laughs> That's my feeling. When it wants to happen, there's no way I can get out of it. So that's how I took it on, and just had to rely on guidance on a daily basis to direct this thing. Yeah, I think I think that's. Oh, we have a. Eliana would like to say something, so you can say something now. Just unmute. Hi everyone. Hi Francis.、Uh, thank you for inviting me for this meeting. It it's been so nice, so inspiring. I had the chance to see、uh, "Take Me Home" in São Paulo. And I still remember that you said that when you had to edit the movie, you had so many hours to to make the cuts and edit them, and、uh, you spent hours, very long hours, trying to do it. And、uh, I guess that when you realized that it was too much, you said to the spirit, "What to do?" And the answer was, "Well." Doing the sequence that it was made, it was something like that.、Uh, in short, the movie was ready, isn't it? It, it was beautiful, and it, it, it's an example of、uh, inspiration, of guidance that I always remember, and I share it a lot. Could you say a little bit more about it? Because it's very inspiring. Sure. Thanks, Eliana. Yeah.
Sorry, Francis. <laughs> Go ahead. Unmute again. Okay. Am I back? Yes. Um, that is a perfect example of the two priorities clashing all throughout this movie making process. It was shown to me that what priorities and what goal I actually have, no matter what I say, because the reason I want to edit it a certain way, like by putting different sequences, uh, maybe put the ending at the beginning or putting more introduction at the beginning, it was because I want the movie to be understood by the audience because the goal is for other people to understand it. You, you see, the, the, the goal is not, what would you want, God? What would you have me do, Spirit? It's, no, this movie has to be understand, understood and has to be received well, and I want it to be received well. People constantly have this thing. When I test an audience, they say, I don't understand anything. You have to explain to me what who is who? Who is this person? Who is that person? There's no intro. So I was hearing a lot of feedback and I, I want to incorporate them and kind of edit it in a way that is different. I have to create an arc because that's what film do. You have to have three, three phase or something. So I, it's like, it's getting more and more and more uninspiring for me as I was doing it. I hear so many feedbacks, so many opinions, what you should do, what you should do. And I try to incorporate and it just became less and less inspiring to the point I lost my inspiration and spark for this movie completely. So completely that I couldn't do it anymore. And the movie looks a little bit more polished, a little bit more like RP because there's different shots at the beginning that set up the characters, but I just lost it and I couldn't do it. To the point I thought, you know, maybe this movie is not supposed to come out. Um, I can't see myself finishing it because I lost it. So I just thought uh, to the point, I really thought so that to the point I, I was willing to delete the whole thing. And I thought before I delete the whole thing, I'll just watch it one more time, the first draft, which I have never edited anything. Everything happening according to the day that things happened, but no editing. Um, and I would just watch it one more time before I delete it. And I watched it one more time, the first draft, and I have so much emotion and spark coming back to me. And I thought, I still feel it. I still feel it. I, want, I still want to do it. But what is going on? Then I heard the spirit said, why do you have to edit my work? I I put things, the order they, they happened, and that's that's how how things happened. Why do you have to rearrange all the all the sequence of things? You don't need to edit my work. And then when I heard that, I thought, but that means I didn't have to do anything. That means the movie is already done. But I already spent two years editing. What do you mean? Like I don't have to edit it? Like, that what is my work then? Spirit said. Yeah, what about, I, I already did it. You don't need to do anything additional, I already did it. So it was like a huge, so from that point, I edited it for two years till that point. And then from that point to actually finish it just a month. I thought, okay then, I get my hands off the wheel. It's your will, you know, I, I'm not gonna care about what people say about this movie. I'm just gonna care about what you say. So I just put it without a lot of the fancy work that I did over the two years and did a little bit of tidy up. So that's what uh, Adriana was referring to. It was a big learning for me, big, big learning and choice of what is the priority for it. So, Eliana, let's start with you. I, or... I 
Eliana, I suspect you had a follow-up question. Why don't you ask it? And then Henry and then Coos. Okay. Go ahead. I remember you said something that was so beautiful. You said that you asked the spirit, why didn't it, he prevent you to commit so many mistakes so the movie could be flawless? And the answer was, the goal was the healing of the mind, not the making of the movie. Can you talk about it? That's it. I I have been making I have been making so many mistakes, similar mistakes. That at the end, when I was actually going to a professional studio to to get this movie like completely rendered, they were pointing at me like how these three cameras are set at different settings. And but in the end, he fixed it all. So that's a good news that every every single error can be corrected at the end. That's a big symbol for me. But even that, I was having this question in my mind, like, Spirit, if you're really guiding me this through this process, why didn't you tell me the right things to do so that I don't have to make mistakes? Why the three camera can be set in the right setting? And, and the Spirit just said in my mind, because the guidance is not about how to get things done in the most correct and efficient way is how to reach love in the most efficient way. That's what the answer is. So thanks for reminding me of it, Olivia Aliada. Mm, I, I just wanted to, I, I haven't heard about this movie. Can you, um, at the end of this podcast, uh, please give us a link if, if there's a link or some source. Thank you. Okay, go ahead, Coase. I, I hope I'm saying the name right. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm speaking. Right. Um, well, uh, what a lovely and 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 exciting uh, details uh, of this long journey with the movie. Um, uh, but I really have to start with um, something else here. Um, I'm presented on on this uh, app, uh, this app with my good friends Peter and Dennis here in the Netherlands and um, we as as boys you know um, living in the Netherlands in this uh, very very um, neurotic uh, uh, circumstances we have a men's group and we um, we 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 play Indian and and uh, have campfires and um, um, do all kind of energetic things together and doing the course already all day. So uh, that was my uh, my introduction, so to say, to to uh, to present myself a little bit. Uh, and this too is a a, a kind of um, dismantling of of my of my egoic uh, neurotic uh, stages in life, which are so consistent that you think that you will be drowned in it instead of started to float. Uh, and that's 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 what's happening here uh, with me at the moment. That 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 I well I found out. No, I I experienced the um, the let's say the that 
that this enormous power or so to say this this well just the, what 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 was the 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 guidance in that moment in in a specific moment, which was very anecdotic and 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 nice and a very long story, but in that moment, uh, with with some nice people around and in 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 this big uh, place, um, the guidance was keep the love in, inside. And and that was the that was the message to be heard that when I keep the love inside, it may, the radiation is guaranteed, and uh, I I could I could keep the love inside meant also that I could stay uh, in the moment uh, that that it was. And and shine <laughs> and shine this love out to these these beautiful people I was relating to. So yeah, that's uh, uh, that's me in uh, Amsterdam, the Netherlands, and uh, with my good other friends here around. Thank you, Francis. And uh, I remember well, it's more than a yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, it's more than a year that uh, I was dancing around on this beautiful green carpet in Casa de Milagros, Go being there for six weeks and st staying there seven months. <laughs> well, lovely to see you back. Thank you. Thank you, Kums. So we're coming close to wrapping up. So if anyone still wants to say something or share something, please do now and then I'll wrap up with Francis. Okay, then let's start wrapping up. So we had a lot of content today and a lot of things to think about, like no people pleasing. We didn't even talk about it, but we don't need to. I think you, you stated a lot about it in the background of the other questions. So, and unmasking, so letting go of this need to appear perfect or appear different than you are. And the, the beauty of following guidance. So I think that's really, really beautiful. And I would like to thank you for sharing all of this and being willing to be here and to participate on this podcast that I've been sharing since over three years and having many different guests, including David and, and others. So David Francis was speaking of has also been a guest on this podcast. So you can go back and listen to that conversation as well. So yeah, there's a lot to look at. <laughs> and next week I'm going to have another guest. So you can always join here every week on Mondays. At the moment, it's every Monday. And if you want to be a guest yourself, whoever of you would like to, just reach out to me. It's an open platform to speak about these beautiful topics of how to open up to who we actually are and to spirit. So, in whatever form that is for each and every one of us. So thank you once again, Francis. Thank you so much, Monaco, for having me and and also prom prompting me to invite some friends. So I I just did right before we started. So I yeah, thank you so much, everyone, to join for joining us today. I just trust it's, um, it's all for a beautiful, beautiful divine plan that the spirit set for us. There is not a moment that is accident and i just trust it so much and I, I love you guys so much yeah so you also can stay on after the recording we will wrap up the recording but then you can stay on and continue talking if you want to so i would like to thank everyone for being here everyone who 
is listening and that is always is listening no matter when you listen to the recording if you're not here live today so thank you all of you please spread the word about the podcast review it get it out there so that more people can join even as speakers as well as as listeners so that is beautiful sharing of so many different voices sharing a message that is so important to each and every one of us i think it's i'm i'm very very happy to have this opportunity to be able to share all of this with all of you and i'm so happy that this platform is allowing that so thank you so much and till next time <laughs>